everyone. It looks like we're live on Facebook. Super exciting. We are so thrilled to have you joining us today. My name is Heather Yush. I work for Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. And I just want to say welcome and happy Transfer Tuesday. Um, it's week two of our virtual engagement series, and this is Transfer Edge Live. So many of you may be already familiar with Phi Theta Kappa's Transfer Edge course, and we will reference this again and talk about it a little more detail later. Um, but today I just wanted to let you know that we are bringing a, a guest with us today live um, to talk to you about the very important topic of how to virtually select the best college. So this sounds like a pretty easy topic in terms of how to select the best college, but when you throw a pandemic in the middle of everything, it makes it a little more difficult. So we have Kate Stano from Springfield College joining us. Um, she is going to be able to talk to you about how to virtually select the best college, given that we're really not available to take campus tours or visit campus right now. Um, but we want you to know that there are definitely ways to get around that in terms of still finding your best fit college. So Kate, you want to take a minute and just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about where is Springfield College and uh, how transfer friendly you are for Phi Theta Kappa members. Sure, sure. So my name is Kate Stano. Um, I've been at Springfield College in the admissions office for about eight years in the transfer role for three. Um, we've been a, a PTK honor roll member for the last five consecutive years um, because of our one on one attention with transfer students. And um, the fact that it's my goal to make the process as easy and accessible for students and families as possible. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Kate. And we're going to learn a lot more about Springfield College and about their transfer friendly practices and their scholarships, which are incredible. Um, but also Kate's going to give some more general information just to help any student out there who's trying to navigate this crazy world that we're living in right now. So um, let's start get started here about um, the transfer honor roll because Kate just mentioned that. So I just want to make sure that you all know there is a list on the website if you're interested in checking out www.ptk.org slash THR, the first letters of transfer on our role, you will find Springfield College listed there as well as many other transfer friendly institutions. So that's one virtual resource that you can use to find your best fit college right there. It's free, easy to find, always 100% available 24 seven. So just check it out at ptk.org slash THR and you can learn the names of these schools. Um, now, before we jump into Kate's great advice, I want to just tell you about two resources really quickly that PTK offers in addition to the honor roll. That was a freebie um, that we mentioned to you, but the two that I really wanted to make sure that you know about, let's say, for example, you find out Springfield College made the transfer honor roll, and you're interested in looking up, well, where is Springfield College? What majors do they have? How many transfer students? You know, Kate's talking about one-on-one -on -one transfer advising, but certainly, you know, how could she do that when there's so many students, right? So if you want to check out all the data, the details, see pictures, videos, student reviews, all learn everything that you can about the transfer friendly aspects of a college like Springfield College. All you do is go to PTK Connect. And for students who are members of Phi Theta Kappa, it's a free resource that you have right now waiting for you. So to get onto this platform, just go to connect.ptk.org. And once you log in to connect.ptk.org, you will be able to type in the name of any school and you could type in Springfield College and you can learn everything you wanna learn about this institution. Um, and you'll have a little heart. So just like social media, the little heart where you favorite it, you click it to favorite it, right? Um, you'll be able to do that. Um, also wanted to introduce Mencima. So she's our wonderful expert from the West Coast joining us today. So she's representing Antioch University and Mencima, perfect timing. We were just talking about the transfer <laughs> honor roll, which you're part of. Yes, so you want to excited to be hi. part of. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to just say hi to everybody and tell us where your campuses are located? Yes, hello everybody and welcome, welcome, welcome to this virtual chat. This is such a great opportunity for everybody and also for us um, hopefully to, to meet some of you guys or hear from some of you guys later. I am representing Antioch University and we have four ground-based campuses. Um, one is in Los Angeles, a second is in Seattle, which is where I am based out of. We also have New England and we have Santa Barbara, back on the West Coast, I'm sorry. And we also have a Midwest campus, which is in Ohio. Wonderful. So we've got great geographical representation from everybody today. 
Um, and if you are watching, I see we've got some people watching right now, and you have questions, just pop them in the chat box. I can actually see your questions, and I would be happy to let the guests, the panelists today, know what those questions are. Um, but, you know, talking about the transfer honor roll where we left off, I think that, you know, that's a really great resource. Hopping over to PTK Connect, which is connect.ptk.org, logging in with your username and password from your Phi Theta Kappa account. You can research all these universities and find out so much information. And I promise you it's better than just Googling it because you'll be able to find transfer specific data that people like Kate and Mencima have taken time to go in and actually enter that information. Um, so it really helps when it's coming from a representative who actually works at the school to read the data that they want you to know about and see the pictures and the student reviews. Um, so thank you ladies for both doing that on the, on the, for the benefit of our students. Um, the other resource that you may already be familiar with is Transfer Edge. So we have a platform, a, a whole uh, online professional or online development course basically so that you can teach yourself how to transfer successfully from a two-year to four-year college. <clears throat> so this is a really helpful resource, especially if you're just getting started or if you're just at home and you don't have a lot to do with the pandemic and you're looking for online resources to help you organize your transfer, look no further because Transfer Edge is there for you as well. And you can just find that by going to get an edge, all one word, get an edge, uh, .ptk.org. Get an edge .ptk.org. Let me make sure I got that right. Um, and so that will be wonderful for you to explore as well because you will also get a digital badge for completing that program. Um, so let's jump in. Let's ask some questions now. So one of the things we talked about was PTK Connect and you can actually look for scholarships in PTK Connect. So I would love to hear from Kate and Nansima about what kind of scholarship could a, a Phi Theta Kappa member get um, which they could learn about. There's over 800 schools that offer Phi Theta Kappa scholarships and those are all in PTK Connect. Um, but let's hear some live information here. Um, Kate, you want to go first and talk to us about what Springfield College can do for a PTK member? Sure, and I neglected uh, to mention this earlier, but we're located in Massachusetts, in Western Massachusetts, about 90 miles west of Boston. Um, we have some other regional campuses around the country offering different programs, but um, I work with all the traditional programs that are main campus in Springfield. Um, so my advice for finding transfer scholarships is to look for transfer specific scholarships on the websites of the colleges that you're looking for and that you're researching. Um, I would also look and see if those scholarship levels match first year scholarship levels because I think that a, a sends a big signal to you as a consumer that uh, the institution that you're looking at values transfer students and their contributions to our community. Um, also look at scholarships and whether or not they're renewable or not renewable. Um, that can sometimes make the difference in being able to afford the second or third year uh, of a program once you transfer. Um, for example, at Springfield, we have very um, competitive merit scholarships that match our first years. Um, so as a PTK student with a 3.5 or higher, you automatically qualify for a $24,000 per year merit scholarship. Um, we also have a scholarship just for PTK students. That's an additional $2,500 per year, also renewable, and both of those are renewable for up to eight semesters. So really look into um, the scholarship amounts, but also the bottom line of the college and, and kind of how much the scholarship is a discount rate of it. Mm -hmm. Great advice. Mencima, do you want to talk to us about what Antioch University offers? I know you represent multiple campuses, so yes. um, you might want to just lay out just a general range or something, whatever you think is most pertinent. Yeah. So um, we offer a PTK scholarship. We are always excited about PTK members because we know exactly what they're bringing to the table as far as academically sound students. They are eager to complete their degrees. They're focused. They're definitely different than the general population of our students. Antioch only has bachelor's programs that are bachelor's completion programs. So they're they're coming in with their, uh, normally with two years completed, and we want to make sure that they graduate as soon as they can by accepting a lot of, um, trend, we, it's rare for us to leave um, credits on the table. Um, so we want to get as many credits as we can to help students graduate as soon as they can. Most of our students who are looking at Antioch are looking at a graduate school. They're looking at one of our graduate programs. So to help them transition into that as soon as possible to get to their career goals. But we do offer a PTK scholarship, which is a $6,000 scholarship. Since most students are coming in with two years to complete, it's, it's divided 3,000 3, per year. Uh, but it should be enough to help them cross over um, into that graduation within that two years. 
Um, but we also encourage students, look at all of our scholarships. There are more scholarships that are offered. You want stackable scholarships, and you don't want something to say, if I get this one, I can't get anything else. But look for st stackable scholarships within the universities that you're looking at and also outside. A lot of students say, well, I don't, I, I, I didn't find anything, but how hard did you look? So PTK is an easy carrot, I think, um, because it's just for you. But what else makes you unique? Is it your cultural background? Is it where you live? Are you a mother? Are you a single parent? Are you a fir um, first time college student? So what makes you special? And normally you can find them. Sometimes it's like, oh, that was only $250 but it's $250 that you're not gonna to have to pay or that, or that you have to um, pay back. And as you start stacking all of those scholarships, a lot of times you'll be surprised how much your, end up, your final tuition out of pocket is. I said, if you're paying something, then you haven't found enough scholarships. You continue looking for scholarships until you graduate. Um, the more you get, regardless of where it comes from or how much it is, it's gonna help you focus on what's important, which is your schoolwork, rather than how am I gonna pay this tuition bill? Um, so definitely, you look for that PTK scholarship. It's the easiest one to find um, um, as a PTK member. But also, what else can you find that you can stack on top of that? Um, so you have any, mil are you from the military or a military family? Um, what's special about you? You'll definitely be able to find, but sometimes you have to dig. I always say it's like a, it's like a, a, a diamond. You have to dig a little bit to find it, but they're there. Excellent advice. Thank you, ladies. That's so helpful because um, one of the things that you both kind of alluded to is ask the next question, you know, that like Mentima just talked about, like you may have some sort of special characteristic that you don't think, you know, it may just be, you know, being a female and it's, it's a school where typically, you know, they're, they're offering scholarships, um, you know, to certain students and it might just be a good fit um, for a female student or um, like a female student in engineering or STEM is a, a very popular one to have scholarships for. So um, you may not think it's special about you, but when you start talking to these recruiters, they might say, oh, hey, you meet the specific profile of a student who would earn this scholarship at our school. So um, don't be afraid to ask. I'm sure that either of these representatives and many more out there in the world would be absolutely thrilled to send you additional resources to look for for scholarships. Um, and, and Phi Theta Kappa, we have our own scholarships too. So don't forget about ptk.org slash scholarships where you can actually log in and apply and compete for scholarships. We have until December 1st open to still consider students for scholarships that are funded through Phi Theta Kappa. We have many donors that give money specifically for students and will help you complete your associate degree, bachelor's degree, or even master's degrees in some cases. So um, I'm sure that Springfield and Antioch would love to work with you and have you come through the door with money from Phi Theta Kappa in addition to them being able to offer you and award you their own funds from their own institutions. Um, Wonderful stuff. So we can do all that virtually. So you don't really need to go to campus to figure that out. You can certainly have a Zoom meeting or go to a, a info session online to learn all, all of that information. Um, the two other aspects of, you know, figuring out a best fit institution. So that kind of covered the financial piece a little bit. Of course, there's financial aid and need based aid and all sorts of things we could talk about. But the other two components of finding the best fit institution are social fit and academic fit in addition to financial fit, which is that third piece. So let me ask um, both of you again, Kate, if you want to go first, just tell us about how do you think students can use some of the virtual resources that you're offering? Um, how can they accurately assess social and academic fit using those resources? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, it depends, I think, on how robust the offerings are for students to partake in. So, um, you know, at Springfield, we've tried really hard to produce a lot of virtual content um, that we can share with uh, interested students to really try to indicate to them the type of community that we are, the type of student that we're looking for. We want it to be a good fit for you uh, first and foremost. Um, so take advantage of all of the offerings that are already available on the website if you kind of want to do it on the sneak and do some research on your own first. That's what uh, those websites are there for. Um, but absolutely feel free to reach out to transfer counselors like Mencima and myself. Um, I am happy to walk you through um, any questions that you might have. Um, I'm also happy to put you in touch with a student uh, or a faculty member if you want to have a really honest conversation about what those things are like at, at Springfield. 
and many of my colleagues in transfer would be more than happy to, um, you know, to do the same for you. So absolutely utilize us as a living resource. Um, you know, stop into um, our college fairs, our events like this. I have daily virtual office hours and you can read all about that at springfield.edu slash transfer. Um, so utilize those resources as you come across them um, to get your, your questions answered because you need to have that information in order to make the most informed decision possible for yourself and for your family. Ben Sima, do you want to talk a little bit about what you would think as, as far as how students are using resources on your website? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there are the, the virtual videos and, and little snapshots of the school. There are um, a lot of, um, uh, there's, there's in, uh, social, social media where students are posting their own pictures. I think that's always good because it's unfiltered. This is what you're going to get. It's from a student's perspective. So always checking out their virtual um, social media sites as well as their posted um, virtual tours and videos on their sites. However, um, one of the things that I love about most universities and definitely is true of Antioch is that you can sometimes sit in a sample class. Um, so call and say, can I sit in a class? Especially now where classes are all going remote, you may not have prepared to be in a virtual or online class, and it's very different from school to school. So the experience that you get in one setting may be completely different in another school. So find out if you can sit in a class, if you can come and visit a class, if, if, if the germs have gone away, if you can do that in person, of course. But if you can even do it virtually now, um, we've, we're opening that opportunity to a lot of students, and they're, they're nervous about starting school virtually. So having an opportunity to take a, a brief peek in on what a class feels like, um, what type of assignments you'll have, how the professors relate to the students, I think it's, it does a world of good. A second resource is always connecting with a student who's there. Most college campuses have um, work studies or, or a student ambassadors who would love to talk to students about their experience, how they, why they selected our university, or how their experience is going um, so far. And sometimes it's like, oh, well, that was a great to talk to that person, but they're not in the major I want to be in. We will definitely find a student that we can connect you with so that you can have that conversation. And you want to ask the, the hard questions about what are your alumni doing? Do they find jobs in the field? What, are, what, what, what goes on? So ask those questions that will help you make the best and most informed decisions. There are well over 3,000 schools that you can pick for most, of, most programs and you wanna pick the one that's right for you, whether it be size, location, um, the commuter population, what resources they have, are they, do they have military type of activities or programs, whatever makes it the right fit and the right home for you, there's so many options, but you have to write the, um, ask the right questions, connect with the right resources on campus, which will be someone in the admissions office for sure, but it might be a faculty, to connect with a faculty member, it might be to connect with a student. That's wonderful advice, and thank you both for mentioning kind of the blend of the online resources like virtual tours and things, but also the human element part of this, which is talking to current students, alumni, faculty members. Um, so this is gonna be an interesting year to see when students make their selection on which college they choose to transfer um, based on what information that they use you know, to, to make that decision. I think that um, it's, it's gonna be really interesting uh, to see how well we all did our research and use these virtual resources. So. Um, thank you for pointing all of those out. Those are super helpful for students. Um, actually, the next question that I had actually ties in with Amanda's question um, about, or I'm sorry, it looks like Lynn was the one that asked this question. Um, and this is a very good one. You know, some students who are listening are just now starting their educational journey. Others might be kind of on the way out of community college, and yet others might be in high school. And the question Lynn asked that caught my attention here on uh, Facebook Live is about running start or early college students, um, also called dual enrolled, concurrent enrollment. We know who these students are. They're those high flyers that are still in high school and somehow figuring out how to take a college credit, which is mind, mind boggling. Um, but we want to know, you know, for students like this, is it ever too early? Is there such a thing for a student to reach out to a transfer admission counselor you know, if they know their path is going to be transferred, that they want to get started at the community college, or maybe they've earned a full associate degree in high school, which is just absolutely incredible. Uh, is it ever too early for these students to reach out? What can be gained or what benefit might they might they find if they do reach out early? Um, and Seema, do you want to talk about that first? 
absolutely. The, 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 the earliest time you should ask is today. Whatever day today is for you, that's when you should start. I remember when I um, focused mainly on undergraduate students, we would start at eighth grade. We would even, um, even go even earlier than that and do kind of um, sessions about kind of careers and career, career choices, but that all leads into kind of getting ready and looking at colleges. And every year of your academic um, step, there's another question, another layer you can add into your search and your, your resources. I started um, looking for, for looking for scholarships and you can find out there's scholarships you can apply for like your freshman year of high school. Once that year is gone, you've missed that opportunity to get that, that scholarship or maybe it's your sophomore year or your senior year of high school. So you wanna start as early as possible because that gives you the, the greatest landscape to prepare. And definitely the financial preparation, finding out what scholarships are available. It gives you that time. It's always interesting to see students in their senior year and the dough lights are like, oh my, I have so much to do. I have so much to do. And the students who started a couple years ahead of them are kind of a little bit more relaxed and, and, and doing things and exploring in different ways that the students who are starting a little later just don't have the time to do. So as early as you can, I don't, I don't, it, it can be even junior high school, high school, um, getting ready to start college, transitioning out of college. The day you know you want to go on is the day you need to start preparing. So it's never too early. The admissions folks around uh, in the various campuses will definitely help you and give you the resources that are appropriate for your, for your stage. Um, but please, whenever you're ready, we're ready. The earlier, the better. That's awesome. Kate, do you have some advice as well? And um, as an addendum to that question, um, they are also asking about scholarships. Are there scholarships available for students who are early college? So um, if you want to address that part of the question too, that would be great. Sure. Um, just one thing to note at, at Springfield, there is a, and at some schools, I would imagine some other schools, there is a difference between coming in straight out of high school with transfer credit as an um, early college student and then coming in as a transfer student. So I would like to echo what Mencina, what, what Mencina said, sorry, um, that is never too early uh, to, to get in touch with your transfer admissions counselor. If you're already enrolled in courses, um, to find out if you would work with a transfer counselor or a first year counselor. And if you do work with a transfer counselor, we can certainly prescribe coursework for you um, to take at a community college that will allow you to get um, the credits that you need to transfer for your major. Um, and any credits that you need to complete an associate's degree. And we do encourage you to complete the associate's degree because um, there, there may be some benefits. Um, so that's one thing I would look into um, if you are getting close to or planning to um, earn your associate's degree at whatever stage. Um, for example, at Springfield, we uh, waive the general education requirements that are outstanding for any student who comes in with an associate's degree. So that might be something to consider if you're looking to do, um, to get in and out as efficiently as possible with your bachelor's degree. Um, so it's never too early to reach out for a number of different reasons, um, but the biggest being that the earlier you start the process, the uh, more time and money you can save yourself. And if you're planning to go on for a master's or a, an advanced degree, or even if you're not, um, the more money and time you can save yourself at the bachelor's level um, will make it easier on yourself later. Awesome, awesome advice. Um, and I would echo what Kate said about the associate degree and maybe staying put is in your best interest in some cases. Um, just make sure that you reach out to let them know what major you're interested in and make sure your courses are properly aligning. Um, so, you know, if you want to reach out in eighth grade, and not leave anything to chance. Um, so, you know, someone like Kate or and Mencima can hand you kind of a roadmap to here's the classes you should take. Um, and those are going to be, you know, guaranteed to transfer if you can follow some of those pathways that are already set up by their specific institutions. So um, lots to be gained by uh, out early outreach, as scary as it might be to email a stranger, and pick, you know, pick up the phone and call a stranger. Um, this is what the recruiters at these schools are being paid to do, to be there for you. So take advantage of that. Um, we had a good question come in as well, um, and I'm gonna get straight to that. So stay on with me. I have one more question that I wanna ask here, and we're gonna open it up and take the questions that we've got. Um, let's say that I am ready to finish my associate degree, and I've used PTK Transfer Edge, and we had a, a comment by Jasmine who said, I just completed Transfer Edge and I loved it. Um, so we got some endorsement for PTK Transfer Edge. 
so let's say we've completed the program, we've learned how to, how to transfer, we're feeling empowered about the steps involved, we're researching schools in PTK Connect, we're feeling good, we're seeing the name of the recruiter on PTK Connect, we're about to call and reach out. Um, now let's say I've decided Springfield or Antioch University, one of these colleges are my top choice. This is my dream school, I'm in love with it, I know I wanna go there. But with everything that's going on in the economy, let's say things have drastically changed for me and perhaps there's been a job loss or wage loss in the family um, and it just doesn't look possible. And it's kind of, that can be a devastating thing for a student to have this plan and then something unforeseen might feel like a roadblock. So if I'm in that situation, what should, what could be gained by me reaching out to either of you personally? Would you prefer to hear from me if I'm one of your students that I may be in your applicant pool or maybe I'm thinking about applying? Should I reach out to you first? Should I call uh, the FAFSA not number? Should I call a scholarship coordinator? What should I do to make this known and what can I gain from sharing this story about my situation? Who do you want to start on that? Okay, um, we definitely want to know. Um, there, there's so many things that are going on with it, um, through institutions to help students in exactly those predicaments. The federal government has issued the CARES Act, which is directed to students to help students who are impacted by the COVID. But many institutions started scholarship funds specifically to help students who have COVID issues related to um, employment laws um, and, and um, a plethora of other things that have happened due to COVID. So please, please, please let us know. There are normally special funds set aside specifically to address those things. Also, um, the federal government FAFSA is allowing students to be re-awarded, repackaged based on new, new data that's coming in. So you might have been awarded, but that award might be changed significantly because of what's happened recently. So don't feel that you are alone. Don't feel that you're the only one going through these issues. This might be the best time to actually start school because of a lot of different things. That you might see the negative things um, associated with COVID, but this might be the best time for you to start school in the financial aid process because of so many provisions that are being made to help students get through this. So do not do it by yourself. Don't feel that no one can help you. We can definitely help. And we want to know that you're affected negatively because of COVID and see what resources we can help to help you um, have your educational goals move forward. That's wonderful. Thank you for that advice. Kate, I'm sure you're going to say something pretty similar, but what would you add to Mentima's comments? Yeah, it's just a, an echo, <laughs> Mentima said. But um, so, yeah, I, I would absolutely encourage you to reach out to the me and Mencima at other institutions that you're working with. Um, I, am, I am here to advocate for you. Um, as a student, as an applicant, I know what it's like to have a dream school. I know why Springfield is awesome. I'm a product of Springfield College. Um, I know why you want to come to Springfield. Um, but what I don't know is what's standing in the way. Um, so please, please absolutely reach out. Um, you have to ask uh, for what you need and you have to self-advocate um, because unfortunately, um, for better or for worse, we're not mind readers. Um, but there are resources available oftentimes uh, for students that have already been packaged and awarded uh, for financial aid purposes. Um, and if we admitted you, it means we want you in our community. Um, I want to go back to what Mencima said earlier about we know um, what PTK students are and we know how well prepared they are to, uh, to transfer and to transition and achieve high academically and become members of our community as transfer students. Um, it's my job to help advocate for you, um, but the onus is on you to communicate your needs to us. Um, but we want you here. If you've been admitted, we want you on our campus. So please do um, talk to us about any needs that you have uh, that might come up. Um, we are a resource for you um, and we're here to advocate for you as students. Awesome, awesome job. So I, I think that you know one of the unintended consequences of all this is the student-centered approach. We're having to reevaluate everything top to bottom in schools are really working hard to make sure that students know that they're looking actively looking for recruiting students and trying to create opportunities to make it affordable and make it possible. So um, your sentiments, I, I think, are being echoed all over the country right now, and, and it's um, favorable for students, you know, to, to have that student-centered approach, um, possibly now more than ever. Um, the question that we did get, and either of you can jump in and answer, is about scholarships. Um, in, in your opinion, do any of these scholarships apply um, if you're wanting to complete 
your bachelor's degree online while you're working. So do scholarships apply to online type of schools or online programs for somebody that's a working adult? Um, either of you have any advice on just generally, I don't know what school that person might be interested in, but just generally what advice could we give Jasmine? Uh, definitely just check the school's website. Um, they make it very clear if, the, the, if there are limitations to certain scholarships or if they're offered to a certain format of a student, but there are definitely scholarships for online schools and online students. Um, they, they have financial needs just like any other student. And just because a program is online doesn't mean it's cheaper and, and students don't need those resources. So definitely if there's a particular school you're looking at, just look at their scholarship um, page and then reach out to someone in the admissions or financial aid office to find out what scholarships you can apply to. There are also outside scholarships that are directed to online students. Um, somebody out there was an online student who needed financial help and is now doing well in life and wants to help other um, international and I'm sorry, online students. So do some work like, like um, Kate said, the onus is on you to do the research, but there's definitely some scholarships out there for online students. That's wonderful. And we had another question come in about what are some trustworthy websites to search for scholarships. And again, I don't know if Amanda was listening earlier when we were talking about PTK Connect, but that would be my first point of uh, reference for you as a PTK member because you're going to find really specific information for students that are in your situation, which is being a Phi Theta Kappa member and a community college transfer bound student. So anything else that either of you would like to add about um, trustworthy scholarship web websites? I have a few pieces of information. The first one is fastweb.com is the website that we tell our students. Yep. Um, what other piece of advice I have is you never should have to pay to enter a list or anything like that for a hey, scholarship. Stop reading my head. <laughs> stop <laughs> reading my mind. You said exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> well, maybe we are mind readers. I just said that we were, but we kind of are. Um, <laughs> so there's that. But also one thing I encourage all students to do is to look into resources in their community. Um, we have a local grocery store chain that offers a robust scholarship program. Check in with um, your relatives places of work. Um, if you're if you know somebody who's involved with the organizations like the Knights of Columbus or the Circle K or um, things like that. Um, many of those programs have uh, scholarships available. So um, it is a lot of legwork, um, but like Mencima said earlier, those things add up um, and to not have that burden in a student loan after you graduate, um, you know, $250 for an essay about, you know, something that you love to talk about is, uh, is a well worth the reward uh, of writing the essay itself. So you may have to turn over a few stones. But the positive news is if we're all kind of shuttered at home, uh, the internet is our friend. If you have internet access, you can look up a lot of those organizations independently on your own time. Absolutely, 100% concur with that. Um, and just the point, there's so many places these days. Before it was this big book that the guy with question marks all over his shirt would advertise. And that was the only way you could find some great scholarships. Um, these days, I just aged myself. These days, um, we have the internet and there's so many um, resources on the internet, but the only caveat is a scholarship is a free gift. So if someone asks you to pay even a dollar, it's not no longer a free gift and it's no longer a genuine scholarship that you should invest in. Um, but there's so many places. I, for example, there, um, there was a 7-Eleven scholarship. Um, how many celebrities have you, have you had over your lifetime? You deserve that scholarship. There, there were scholarships from all these weird, weird places. A lot of people target the big ones. I wanna have the, the Ronald McDonald one or the, the, the um, Coca-Cola ones or the Bill Gates ones. They're huge, they'll take care of everything. Those are harder to get, but the little small ones are the ones that chip away and, and really, you probably have a greater chance of getting. So go for the big ones, of course, but also don't, don't, don't put aside those smaller ones, the ones from the local community, communities. Where do your parents work, your aunts and uncles work? They normally have scholarships that they may be able to give or they have some type of tuition reimbursement program that can help dependents. So look at all your, you have tons of resources and again, your admissions officers or whatever colleges will help you direct you. Um, you're, if you're in a high school, your transfer counselor or your high school college counselor, they've been doing this for a lot of years. They've seen a lot of scholarships come over their desk. So they are a great resource in finding scholarships. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for being so transparent and generous with the information that you're offering these students because 
Um, you know, we have our website, PTK Connect. We also have ptk.org slash scholarships. Um, but, you know, other than that, those are the resources that we have through Phi Theta Kappa. And of course, all of our partner universities have scholarships that are available. So um, there's a, by extension, there's a large network of scholarship dollars available to you um, as a Phi Theta Kappa member. Um, and last but not least on that topic, I was also going to mention, um, you know, with scholarships that, you know, some of those scholarships are available directly to students. So that's a really interesting thing that we offer through our ptk.org slash scholarships that those scholarships are awarded directly to students. Um, so that gives you a little bit of flexibility and cer certainly in times like this, you know, to get that money so that it's not going directly to pay for your tuition and you never actually get to see the check. It goes straight to the college. So um, look at all of the different factors involved and even look at your own employer. You might overlook the first place you should look, which is your own employer. They might have a student loan repayment program, which would be fabulous if you're definitely going to stay on board with that employer and you could reap the benefits of like an employer um, payment program where they would actually repay or help pay on your student loans that you owe. Um, so those student loans may not be such a terrible option after all if you're going to get help repaying them. So um, we have some really great questions coming in and I see that um, you know, we can go ahead and answer some of those, I think, in the comments after this section, after this session wraps up. So um, thank you guys for staying engaged. I don't want to keep dragging on all day um, to, to give um, too much information, um, but I wanted to make sure that we were all able to get together, have a good discussion here. And I think we've hit on all the high points of financial, social, and academic fit um, to kind of help you virtually navigate your next steps. Um, so we will answer questions that we see on Facebook here to all of you students who are still asking questions. So we will get back to you, get you some great answers. Um, the last thing I want to do other than thank our very special guests today, you guys are the transfer pros, you're the, the transfer experts, and we certainly appreciate your wealth of knowledge. Um, and, and students, if this sounds like a good fit for you, reach out to Kate Stano, take her advice, take Mencima's advice. These folks work at Springfield College and Antioch University, two of our transfer honor roll institutions. Um, they will be thrilled to talk to you and, and then definitely represent transfer institutions that are very friendly to PTK members. Um, lastly, I got to plug the events for the week. So today's already Tuesday, believe it or not. So we've got Wednesday, Workforce Wednesday is coming up. So we want you to rejoin us at two o'clock tomorrow central time and there's a zoom link on our facebook page to sign up so you can listen in on a phi theta kappa alums workforce wednesday story and also you can hear um, tomorrow at 4 p.m central time leveraging ptk connect to find employment the right career path or the employment pathway that best suits you so you can come right back here tomorrow same time same place or Thursday, we have Training Thursday, which is about building a stronger resume at 2 p.m. Central Time Thursday. So there's a Zoom link for that on Facebook. And last but not least, Friday is our PTK Palooza, which means you get to post pictures of yourself wearing Phi Theta Campus inspired outfits, graduation regalia, swag, PTK socks, pins, whatever you've got that you want to show off on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. I'm going to be wearing my swag from the Phi Theta Kappa store, which is my PTK hat that I wear all the time. Probably drink some coffee out of my PTK mug that matches my shirt. So I am ready for Friday so I can participate in PTK Palooza. So thank you guys so much. This has been a wonderful discussion. Virtual uh, Engagement Week is going alive and strong here. So don't miss out on all the events we've promoted on our Facebook page. Um, one last big thank you guys and everybody else out there listening. Thank you and good luck with the rest of your educational journey. Don't let anything disrupt you or deter you from your educational goals, especially now. Um, it's more important than ever to have a degree or a credential in this situation we're all in. So keep working, keep your eye on the prize and stay focused. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. Thanks so much. Keep commenting. We'll answer. Bye-bye.